Okay, next up, we have Alexander and Dan, who will be talking about audio quality, something we could really use for conference audio uh, planning. Uh, so perfect, perfect environment for it. So take it away, Alexander and Dan. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? <laughs> Which is actually the title of our talk. Could you switch slides, please? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Right. I got it. Okay, so can you hear me? This is the title of our today's talk. We want to show you how you can survive audio quality testing. Audio quality makes or break real-time products. If audio quality is bad, um, people will use a different solution. They will move away eventually from your product. So as we at Citrix have um, several products using uh, real-time communication, we developed um, a web service, a common solution that tackles common problems. Um, our solution is now adapted by different teams and we are going to present you the solution today. I'm Alex, I'm a student from Germany, and um, besides studies, I've always been involved in, in audio, I've been involved in scale, scale testing automation, and also most recently in audio quality automation. And I'm Dan, and I've worked at Citrix as, uh, in many roles all around audio, so as a, as a test engineer, as a manager, and as a test architect. And uh, we're here representing a, a large team that has worked to deliver something. And that team is now, uh, we're just lucky enough to be the ones here presenting while that team's at home working on the innovation that we'll show next year. So um, we're going to start at a very high level, and then we're going to funnel down into something specific, which Alex will present. And so I'm going to share the, the scale of audio at Citrix, some of the testing challenges that we set out to solve a few years ago. And um, then I'm going to set up one specific end-to-end -end test and show you the components involved in that. And finally, then, we'll focus in on a component that Alex worked this last year to build called the Audio Quality Assessment Service. So you're probably familiar with, in fact, have used one of the products on this page. So go to my PC and go to Assist at the bottom. Um, don't have as much to do with audio, but the top four is what we're talking about today. And Open Voice is our telephone-only conferencing system. And then as well, go to meeting, go to webinar, and go to training, which are uh, online conferencing systems typically involving a screen share, a webcam share, and then for today's talk, the audio. So. Each of these products have a, a client piece, maybe a Mac, Win, PC, mobile, web, and we are um, we're basically taking screen, webcam, and some other information and some audio, and we're sending it up to a conference bridge centrally located that's mixing and then sending back out the, with some thought to what gets sent out. For instance, you don't want to hear your own voice back at you, or perhaps one of you is muted and you want to make sure that person's not heard in the conference. And all of that audio comes back uh, and goes out at a rate of 1.4 billion audio audio minutes per month. So that's the scale that we're working to test. And we've been working hard to improve a couple other metrics while the audio numbers keep going up. We've also um, reduced the number of customer escalations. So th these are the cases where customers call in with an issue that can't be solved by first line, and they go up to uh, our audio ops. So that number has been going down even while the minutes go up. And then we're really proud of this, our, our footprint, our, our, the number of servers it takes to deliver audio has actually been reduced uh, by a factor of 10. And it, all, all along the audio minutes are going up, so we've uh, increased the scale and the quality and the efficiency. Okay, so let's get into some specifics here. What are the testing challenges that we're trying to solve? The first thing that we've learned is that um, no audio in an online meeting is a deal breaker. So we work very hard to deliver screen sharing, webcam, and some other features without any interruption. But if you have a minute or two of interruption on your screen share, you can typically live with it because you've seen what was there before or what may be coming. But if you miss a second or two of audio, it's pretty critical. And you, you all know this from being on phone calls or conference calls. And, and you can imagine being on a call with your, your boss who's happy to tell you that he's, he's going to give you a dollar raise. 
Well, you missed a pretty important word there. <laughs> you want to know how much it is. And so um, obviously the, the network and other factors are always a part of it, but we want to work as hard as we can to deliver the best audio we can given the, given the situation. So um, let's look at a couple equations we were trying to solve. Uh, the first is that we have a limited number of audio experts for testing. And so um, we're very concentrated on the audio at Citrix. We have over a dozen PhDs just simply focused on delivering audio. But guess what? Each of those PhDs have only two ears. So we needed to find a way to clone them and to, to get their, their work into automa in automation so that everyone can use it. And secondly, there's many teams that are consuming the audio platform into the product. And so uh, the first goal, let's make testing easy for non-experts. Secondly, we know that testing audio manually is time consuming and it can be subjective as well. And so we wanted to find a way to, number one, make it objective and then um, also something that is repeatable. And what we find is that uh, if you make it easy enough, then any team will consume and add this to their basic acceptance test. But otherwise, you have teams on the peripheral who, who's, uh, whose work is somewhat related to audio delivery, but not specifically, and they're less likely to introduce a new basic acceptance test unless it's made very easy for them. So these are the two testing challenges that we set out to solve, and um, all with the idea that better audio testing would lead to better audio quality and then happier customers. And, and as for all of us, our goal is just let's get out of the way and let our customers talk to each other. We want them to have the same delight that this tin can conference has on the screen right now. And um, so that's what we're setting out to do. So let's talk about a pyramid. We looked at a pyramid earlier today. This one is specific to audio testing, and it's a, it's a way to kind of frame the conversation. This might apply to other types of testing you're doing, but in, in, in a way with audio specifically, we want to start, let's start at the bottom of the pyramid. So let's think about functionality. Anyone who's uh, delivering a cell phone or a conference call or any kind of audio uh, sound-related software, if you ask them, are you testing your audio, you will most likely get an answer of yes, but the question is, which one of these tests are they doing when they talk about testing audio? And so uh, a very common feature in an app is to, uh, to have a mute button. So let's use that as one of our examples here. At the bottom of the pyramid, the audio functionality would say, yep, I'm, I'm in a call. Look at my screen. You can see that I'm in a call. I press mute, and guess what? It turns red. Or I press unmute, and it turns green. So we have an automated test around that. But I would still consider that audio functionality. And if we wanted to extend this to the analogy of a plumber, if I'm, if I'm a plumber building out a new house, I'm going to go in, and I'm going to set up all the pipes end to end, connect them tight. But somebody outside the window is going to yell to me, are you ready? Are you ready for the, for the water to turn on yet? And at that point, all I've done is kind of check the functionality and make sure everything's in place. But I haven't actually turned on the tap. And when we move up, when we turn on the tap, we move up in the pyramid of steps. So this is audio presence. Or in the case of the plumbing analogy, it's saying, yeah, water's flowing out the pipes now. We know we have water. So audio presence is a, is a very valuable way to test. Uh, it doesn't concern itself with the quality, but it just simply says, um, do we have audio or not? And again, the muting example. In this case, my automation presses the mute button, and now I'm actually verifying that while I'm muted, you're not hearing my voice. So very important for those of you who work from home and mute from time to time. Uh, I'll leave the rest to you. Um, at the top of the pyramid now, so, so if we turn on the, the faucet and we've got water coming out, right? Maybe we pour it into a glass, but we haven't yet answered the question, do I want to drink this water? Is this, is this good enough for me to drink? And so it is with audio. Do we want to, is this audio quality good enough that in one sense, I'm not even thinking about the audio. It's just, it's just there. In, in other senses, we can even enhance what might be poor conversations and make them better. And so it's this top of the pyramid that, that we've been focused on. It's the, it requires the most expertise. And yet what we wanted to do was take, take as much as we can, make it common components, and then deliver it to those who are working in the functional level who already have automated tests and give them something that wouldn't disrupt their existing test much. They can add in the audio quality and boom, verify it on the way out the door and we know we're good. So um, again, just kind of restating our design goals here, uh, what we see in, in green are, are the product teams, the many teams who have their automation working on their functional tests, and what we see in the orange, our desire is to separate out that which required expertise, and we can build into common components and deliver. So it's one universal test solution that all teams can use. Okay, so let's get a little more specific here. Um, 
I'm going to set up for you what we call an end-to-end -end test. And we have a lot of different kinds of tests that we do at, at different levels, component levels and so forth. But this is kind of our our end-to-end. -end. Let's get a view of it and make sure that, number one, uh, our quality is good, but also that maybe we haven't introduced something that would, that would cause a regression. So uh, here's the four key components you would need. Um, first of all, a standardized input file. You know, like any kind of testing you're doing, you need a control set. Um, we're using actual voice files. We found that using different voices, because it processes and sends differently, we want to make sure that every kind of voice would sound good um, in the product. And then we've got to figure out a way to get that into the product in an automated fashion. So. Just as you know, my voice is going into this microphone, goes into a system, let's call it a black box, and then comes out the other end, and, and then it's, it's out in the airwaves again. Your ears can hear it. What we're trying to do is kind of automate or, or virtualize or mock those, those interface points, right where the air meets the, the digital world. And so um, we had to arrange a, a, a mock microphone that would inject audio as if it were a microphone selection in the GoToMeeting application. And there's third-party tools to do this, some open source, and we started with those. And then eventually we, uh, we adjusted our own audio engine to include the inputs ourselves. And then from there, now we've, we've got a known input file that's going into the product. And of course, then you send it through the typical, you know, the conference bridge that I described and, and bring it out the other side. So we've got a client on the other side that we started with automation and the audio arrives there. And now again, we have a mock speaker which captures that and pulls it out into something like a WAV file or a RAW file. So now we're sitting with two files. One's a known good, one's an unknown. And now this is where we need a way to analyze and figure out what to do with that audio. Is this good or not? Have we improved or at least not regressed on the, on the quality? And so um, the audio quality analysis services is what we came up with and what we've been working to build. And it includes some several key components here. And I'll show you on the next slide. So. Um, Alex is going to talk in depth about this. Uh, one of them is the Polka license, which is uh, a third-party ob objective measurement tool that we chose. We've also doing some frequency analysis, and he'll give you a lot more detail on that. Um, but again, we're here with the orange. We've abstracted the common layers and made it available to anyone. And then um, whatever client type we're working with, whatever platform we're working on, and whatever automation our teams had, we wanted to give them something that they could use, something simple, maybe a REST interface that they can upload their audio files to. We'll give them back a score, and then they can decide whether that's a pass-fail. So here the area in red is what Alex is going to be focusing on as he comes up to share next. OK. Thanks, Dan, for providing the background. Um, and let me take over on the motivations. I will recap and um, go more into technical details. So first motivation, we want to make audio quality testing as easy to use with no expertise needed. Um, second, we want to have platform support. We have different um, tools for automation. We see um, we have different um, endpoints, Windows, Mac, mobile endpoints, Android, uh, Windows Mobile, but also web-based um, endpoints and automation. We want to support all of that. Third motivation, we want to visualize um, results over time. We want to um, track results and um, see how, how the audio quality evolves in different builds. And fourth, um, license restrictions. Some algorithms we use are bound to um, certain machines, and um, making, making this audio quality analysis as a service um, tackles this problem. So we, um, yeah, it's quite a bit catchy, AQA as a service. Um, that's an internal service we expose to our, um, to our infrastructure and our tests. And we provide um, tests for quality, the top of the pyramid um, we heard earlier, and um, presence, which is the medium level. This all is accessible through simple interfaces to the testers. So here it's getting a bit more tec technical. It's um, the design um, and implementation of the service. On the left-hand side, um, on the top, we see there's a, a client side and a service side. The service um, has um, a back-end. It connects to a database and object storage. And let me just go through a simple interaction between client and our service. First, we upload audio files or audio raw data with parameters. Um, 
like sample rate. Uh, second, we describe and we create a job, we call it a job, that um, is specified by files and by a method of evaluation. Then third step is um, starting the job and in the end we just fetch results and see um, what the evaluation gave us. Implementation-wise, we had um, some requirements to the service. Um, it had to have a native component because signal processing algorithms are um, running natively. So we chose Node.js and um, made a native C++ module for it. And this native C++ module integrates the Polka algorithm I will talk later on about. Then the SOX utility, which provides a lot of features for um, audio analysis and different codecs like Opus and MP3 to decompress files to a sample-based format. Um, the service on the front side exposes its interface through REST and gRPC based on Google Proto buffers to support um, multiple um, clients. And we defined a client API that we implemented in Java, Python, and C++. Okay, so I want to talk about the first category of our testing methods, and this is um, quality. Here we chose um, Polka. We evaluated different algorithms, and Polka is a, a third-party algorithm we integrated. It, um, <coughs> it basically gives us a mean opinion score, a MOS score. The MOS score is a value, a score between uh, 1 to 5, and 5 is the best. And um, Historically, a MOS score, or what it basically means, you, you ask um, people how they would, um, how they would um, rate their perception of audio. And Polka does this automatically. It, um, it just evaluates the part of the audio file that the human is really, um, the human really percepts as um, good or bad uh, speech quality. So along with the mean opinion score, um, Polka gives us um, other metrics like um, speech presence or levels. And Polka is called a full reference algorithm, so we need a reference signal and we need a degraded recorded signal. And yeah, that's what uh, Dan showed us earlier on the slide, we, we have a known reference file and a recorded file. And in the end, we can compute a score between 5 and 1. The second um, category um, is uh, presence testing. Here we currently have exposed three algorithms. First, it's um, frequency analysis, speech presence, and amplitude analysis. For frequency analysis, we can um, identify different active speakers. So imagine a meeting, um, each uh, participant would play out a different frequency and in the end you can um, verify that, uh, that certain speakers have been playing out frequencies in the meeting. So we get um, regions classified to frequencies as a result. Then a second category is um, speech presence. Here we get um, regions classified as active speech. And the third um, method is amplitude analysis. Here we can verify that, um, for example, that certain speakers are um, not too loud or not too silent. Okay, I, will, I want to give you a live demo of the service. We should see it in a second. Okay, so what, what I'm doing here is I'm using the Python client API that, um, that defines, or I have three, three tests, and um, each test um, uploads um, a set of files and executes a Polka job. So first we, we create the job, 
we add the files, reference file, degraded file. We add um, tags for later on identification and tracking of the results. And we start the job. In the end, we get the state, like the result, and specifically the MOS score. And we verify that the score is um, above a certain threshold of 4.0. Um, the first test is uh, using like a non-degraded file. The second um, test is, is um, using a recorded file that has been recorded in a condition with 5% packet loss. And the third test in a condition with 10% packet loss. Okay. While it's um, running, it, um, it takes some, some seconds. I will yeah, the first one is passed, but I'll switch here, and I will just show you the front end. Here we have a, a dashboard. We can see um, different kinds of, um, of tasks, and um, how much have been processed, and how, how many currently are running, along with um, information about the machine. Then in a separate view, we have um, jobs. We can see, we can see all, all the jobs that are, um, have been processed. We can filter for tags and dates. And what we also have is a, pay, um, a description of API and logs. OK, so the tests have all been run through. So first off, we have the 10% packet loss. And here we see it, it gives us a quite bad score of 1.6. I will just play out the um, degraded file. So the first one is the reference file. The second one is the degraded file I will play out. I know you went to pick him up. Would you please read the date and timestamp indicated on the lower right hand corner? OK, we see there's, um, we hear there's some distortion. So the 5% packet loss. Simple. I know you went to pick him up. Would you please read the date and timestamp indicated on the lower right hand corner? Yeah, this gives us a score of um, 2.4. And then the, the best file, which has been recorded in a condition with no packet loss. Simple. I know you went to pick him up. Would you please read the date and timestamp indicated on the lower right hand corner? Yeah, we can um, see the score is 4.6, which is a quite good Polka score. OK, back to the presentation. Okay. Good. Yeah, so we have some minutes left for questions. We are happy to answer. Very good. Now a round of applause for Alex and Dan. I think I need to switch this laptop to display the questions. Uh, but I have the first question here, and I'm not lying. This is a true question. Do you have any way of measuring audio latency in addition to quality? Well, in a sense, the, the, the latency, here we take that, the latency in a test like this, uh, if the, if, even if the file arrives or the audio arrives three, three seconds later, but in the exact same quality, it would still score good on a test like this because we're, it, it's just time shifted, but it's still good quality. So in terms of latency, then we would need to set up a different kind of test and um, where we could kind of uh, time when the audio was begun to send and then time when it arrives and uh, arrive at a latency score. So. Not something within this system, but yes. OK. And how do you replicate different bandwidth scenarios, uh, e.g., good use of e.g., by the way, <laughs> slow internet connection? Yeah, maybe I can answer that. We have in our um, test infrastructure also a degrader that we can control with a, with a API in automation, and there we would just limit bandwidth and packet loss. Yeah. Uh, yes, and now that we can see the questions, I'll take another okay. one.
from the online, is this is the acceptable threshold for audio quality dependent on the language or dialect being used? No. In this case, we're uh, comparing waveforms, so it doesn't matter what language or dialect is being used, which is very helpful. Uh, you, any you questions? Live questions? Right here. I, uh, hi, I'm Usman from Blah Blah Car. Um, I just wanted to know if there's any way of testing um, certain filters or corrections uh, that might be happening on the client side or wherever it may happen, such as noise cancellation. Right. This, would, this is a challenge for objective testing because um, in many cases it's, it's comparing a source and an output file, whereas in, in, in the case you're talking about, the client's actually improving the audio through something like noise cancellation. So in effect, it makes the input file different from the output file in a better way, but the algorithm does not always detect that. So for that kind of testing, we have to go back to those uh, 24 ears I was talking about. Yeah. Uh, how consistent are the measurements? If you run a test many times, will you always get the same outcome? Um, it kind of depends if you run the whole test many times, like recording um, the file many times, because yeah, network conditions can, can change. But yeah, the algorithm, the Polka algorithm, for example, is um, completely deterministic, so you would get the same outcome. But if you have changing network conditions, you would get slightly different outcomes. Yeah. And just raise your hand if you have in, uh, another in-room question. Uh, how would you, um, do you think this would be effective in a podcast scenario where we may be delivering via web, you know, some sort of uh, applet or uh, mobile-based uh, audio quality testing? That's a good question. So it's one directional audio, so we no longer have kind of the time sensitivity. We can buffer and make things sound better on the other end. So a little bit less of a challenge for the audio quality, but um, I don't see any reason why we couldn't as well put it in, get it out, and then compare the two scores. It seems right. Uh, I think we have time for one more. So if you run an algorithm with 10% packet loss 10 times, how much score variability? Wouldn't this indicate true value of your Polka test? Well, there's a couple parts of that answer. Maybe I'll take one and Alex can um, talk about the second. Um, right, the, the packet loss itself, uh, again, whether it's deterministic, whether it changes over time, that is going to affect what comes out the other side. And so we, we can work with degraders that do both, which degrade it in the exact same way 10 times, or we can we cannot. Um, Maybe just to comment on the, the true value of the Polka test, I think the true value of this end-to-end -end test that, I, that, that I'm showing, describing, that we're presenting here today is, is essentially making sure that audio quality stays the same over time, no matter what you do and what changes you make. And so it's not that this test itself is kind of the, hey, here's the number and here's how good GoToMeeting is in audio. It's a 4.7. It's, um, it's a matter of, hey, we scored 4.6 yesterday, and today it's a 4.2. Why? What went wrong? What can we... Double check there. Do you have anything to add? No. 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 All right. Well, thanks, Alexander and Dan. Thank you. Thanks. Although, I guess as a final follow up question, I wonder if this means I can't use your breaking up as an excuse anymore. Thanks to their testing. I use that all the time. <laughs>